through one of its through one of the region's strongest cultural products, food. Wow, that was horrible. <laughs> it's all good, dude. It's all good. I'm so much better of like a freestyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that too. <laughs> Alright. So we're all very excited to have you be a part of this event for our Latinx community. We're putting on an event for Hispanic Heritage Month, and we just knew we wanted you. It'd be great if you could cook one or two dishes, but like nice dishes, you know, not Mexican, something more exotic. So yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, being a chef out in the South, especially one of Mexican descent or being a brown chef, you know, you get asked to do these events and people want to show how they're aware of diversity and all that, and they'll ask you to do these things, but they make you into a caricature of yourself, you know, they want, they want to highlight diversity, but in the way that makes them feel comfortable. So they turn you into this like puppet, it almost seems like. You know, they want you to wear the sombrero. They want you to like have chili peppers all around you and be do a little song and dance, a little ay 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 or something. And I'm like, who the fuck is that person? You know what I mean? Like, it's not like that. So, you know, diversity is actually understanding people and who they really are and how they want to represent themselves. So when the SFA asked me to write about the future of the South, you know, there's so much that embraces what could be the future of the South. But what I do know is that it can't be this. It can't be people asking you to be a caricature of yourself for their comfort, for their diversity purposes. That can't be it. And that's what led me to start writing what I envision a future of the South being like. And it's one where these things do not happen. It's one where all communities have a right to stake their claim in the South, to be themselves, to represent themselves as accurately as possible through their lens, not through the lens of making people feel comfortable with that diversity. It's a South that will become united through commonalities, not through differences. We're all aware of our differences by now, but what we haven't discovered is our commonalities. And if there's one thing I know about food, food brings people together and it's a good conversation starter. With envisioning this new South, that's why it's important for me to be able to produce dishes such as Bruns Mex Stew, which unites a dish from my parents' hometown in Mexico, birria, a goat birria, with a classic Southern staple, which is Brunswick Stew. And these two dishes do remind me of each other, and putting them together, making that remix called Bruns Mex Stew. This is an identity that we don't have to be apologetic for. When my parents came in, they would grab things that were now native to this land and use it to make dishes that would remind them of home, just different ingredients. We just want to represent ourselves the way we want to, the way we see ourselves, the way we want to eat. I began smoking goat and pulling it and using that goat and mixing it in with a little bit of the spices of birria, but then also adding in butter beans, black eyed peas, just adding in carrots, adding in a lot of the characteristics of what is Brunswick stew, and combining the two, and what turned out was a fantastic dish that to this day, people are always like, hey, when are you gonna put that back up? But uh, it is a very complicated dish, uh, because smoking is no joke, and uh, a lot of Mexican food's preparation is also laborious, so that's another thing that I found kind of interesting is like how sometimes Southern food and Mexican food are viewed as not upper echelon, yet the amount of time it takes to prepare these things, the amount of dedication, the amount of time you have to focus on smoking something proper, on making these sauces and reducing them for four hours, how laborious it all is, it's kind of funny. That's what made this dish to me seem more authentic to what I'm trying to represent, where it's like, this was a lot of work, this was a labor of love, and the dish is one that is a hit, but more importantly, there's this feeling of connection. To see people have it and be like, oh, this is fantastic. It, it does taste like beer. It does remind me of Brunswick stew. That's the common ground I think I'm searching for when it comes to my identity through cooking. I really wanted to bring those things into focus and really just celebrate two cultures and two iconic dishes by merging them together to create something that is mine. So a vision for the future of the South is that. It's one where you are unapologetic about who you are and how you want to represent yourself. No lenses, no caricatures. Be who you are and make the food you want to make.